Your final storyteller tonight is Milena Williams Haas. Give it up! I got family originally from Flatbush, so I'm down. In December of 2013, I was living with two fantastic Jewish dykes out in Flushing. And I was barely making it as a sex educator because talking to people about sex is not the most lucrative career one can come up with. And I had been working for um, a sex website. Basically, you know, do you remember Adult Friend Finder? Remember those motherfuckers? <laughs> yeah, they made a lot of money. And so my job at the time for them was writing copy and searching for the most magnificent dick pics to put up on their website. And so I had done this for years, basically working at a place where like, if you aren't looking at dick, they know you're fucking around. <laughs> so, so it's like, you're looking at like, oh, lol cats, lol cats, and then your boss comes and you're like, oh, dick, 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 dick. <laughs> like, that was my job. And I made a shit ton of money. So coming from being like a poor black kid from the projects to making the most money I had made in my life looking at dick was kind of amazing. And so I spent a couple of years then running around the country and running around all over the world, like to Europe and Australia and every place, talking about sex, talking about kink, as a black woman who also identified as being submissive and being into kink and BDSM, there weren't a lot of role models out there for me. So I had to kind of like be my own pervert. Like the two or three other submissive black women that I had met in my life, were like amazing stalwarts of the kink community. And then I was like, yes, there need to be more of us. There need to be more kinky black women out there doing the kinky black woman thing yes. for us, for the people. Why aren't they out there? And then they're like, if you don't see what you want, be the change. And they're like, fuck. <laughs> I don't want to be the change. Sometimes I just want to like, you know, fucking chill and watch the change, but no. So I had really dedicated myself to this and I had spent years pursuing this dream. And in December of 2013, I was down to my last thousand bucks in the bank. And I was living with two friends and they were magnificent, they were wonderful, but this was not gonna be the rest of my fucking life. And I had tried for so many years to find a dominant partner. And the thing is this, like a lot of people when they meet me are kind of shocked I'm submissive. I have no fucking idea why this is so hard for them to believe. And I would meet these guys and they'd be like, well, you don't act very submissive. And I'm like, well, you don't act very dominant because if you did, I'd be kneeling and sucking your dick, wouldn't I? <laughs> so I sought the dominant type for me. And I had dated a couple people. I had a couple really great relationships, but nothing that ever really gelled. Everyone was either like super polyamorous, and while I don't mind playing around with other people, I really wanted that heart bond connection with one person. And that was a little bit hard to find in the King community. And I had compromised so much. And let me tell you, compromising is great until you grind up against your limit and you're like, oh, this is no longer compromise. This is me actually giving up on my fucking dreams which I did not want to fucking do. So in this shower, I had one of these conversations with God, flying spaghetti monster, the universe, whoever the fuck you want to call it, your higher power, right? And I said, look, you know what? I have put myself out there. I have had faith. I have taken the leap. I left San Francisco. I grew up in New York. I moved out to the West Coast, did the West Coast thing, came back. New York received me like a lover, who kind of hates you, but still wants to like rage fuck you because you know how the city is. <laughs> Came back home and New York was like, ah, get over here, you little bitch, take it. <laughs> I was like, thank you, thank you, Manhattan, thank you. <laughs> and Manhattan's like, oh no, 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 you're gonna live in Flushing. Like it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs>
And I said, you know, I did the shit. I did the manifesting your power shit that they tell you to do. And I'm still fucking lonely. And you know what's interesting is that there are lots of people who feel great about being single, people who feel self-actualized when they're on their own. And I was not one of those people. And it took a lot for me to say to myself, I'm happier when I'm with someone. I'm a submissive, I like to submit, I like to do things for people. That turns me on, I guess my pussy wet and my nipples hard. Doing for myself only goes so far. <laughs> but I figured, you know what? At some point, you have to be realistic. And so in this shower, in December of 2013, I had this conversation and I said, hey, you know what? I've done it. I did the shit. I am going to say, you know what? Fuck this trying to be a, se a sex educator. Fuck all this bullshit. I have many skills. I'm gonna go get myself a nice fat corporate job, rake in six figures, chill out with the sex educating thing. Being a pervert is obviously not that fucking lucrative for me at this time. <laughs> I'm just gonna move on. January 1st, 2014, new life starting. Unless, unless universe, you happen to send me the perfect dominant. I want the one. I want the one that we all been fantasizing about. I want the one who wants to take care of me. I want the one who sees me. I want the one who doesn't give a shit. No, I want the one who not only doesn't give a shit that I am a bossy, loud ass bitch. I want the one who thinks that's the hottest fucking shit on the goddamn planet. That's the dominant I want. I want the person who sees me and thinks, holy shit, can I? Get me some of that. <laughs> That's the one I need. And I was just playing fuck you with the universe because I knew A, that person didn't exist, B, they certainly weren't going to be interested in me, and C, I was not going to find them between now and the end of the year. So I figured that that was a safe bet. And then, on OkCupid, of all websites, <laughs> I get a message from someone with the handle, Spicy Spirit Love. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> so I open this profile, and they have several strikes against them. Strike one, no picture. Please remember, I have spent years working on adult websites, adult dating websites. I got my criteria shit on lock. No picture, some wrong. Strike two, their profile is not completely filled out. I'm going, okay, Cupid gives you so many opportunities to show off how awesome you are, and you have filled out like two things. <laughs> Strike three, some awkward syntax in their profile. And I'm like, oh, dude, you couldn't like use grammar and spell check? Come on. <sighs> so then I'm like, all right, I open the email and I read the following. Hi, Melina. Wow. Your profile is great. Theater, sub, unusual spiritual fodder, curvy fat black chick, trembling flower of submission. These were all things in my profile. <laughs> I'm older than you want, 60, but I have a strong German-Austrian accent. <laughs> I had indicated that I had a thing for accents. I specifically said British accents, but I'm flexible. <laughs> I am strongly interested in BDSM with some experience. I am a top, and I do not drink any alcohol. I'm a recovering alcoholic, so this is nice. I trust in the definition of Rob Robert Mapplethorpe. SM means sex and magic. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> I am an artist, very successful, probably a member of the top 10 or 20 in my genre in the world. Crazy, developing new spaces, especially interested in the dark sides of emotions. I would like to tame you. <laughs> Warm wishes, Georg. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this explains the syntactical awkwardness. English is his second language. It also explains why he doesn't have a picture up. He has some notoriety. He's trying to be cool. 
And I'm thinking, okay, the magnificent thing is that he read my profile and responded to shit within my profile. And why motherfuckers don't do this as a default is baffling to me. It's not hard. Read the shit, respond to the shit, get the shit. How fucking hard is that? So I wrote back and I said something flowery and whatever and I was like, well, you don't have any pictures of yourself, so blah, blah, blah. Within 47 minutes, he had sent me back three of the worst selfies I have <laughs> ever seen in my life. Everything you don't do in a selfie, chin from the bottom, hair all fucked up, like, like not in focus. And I'm looking at this and saying, if this guy is so into this moment that he just stopped and didn't even give a shit and was like, I'm gonna send this shitty, shitty selfie. I was like, this guy can get the date. So he invites me over to his house and as crazy as this seems, I'm like, I'm a Craigslist veteran. If you give out your home address to someone and I happen to know already shit about you and I told him, I said, look, I got two lesbians in Queens who will come for you. <laughs> if you fuck with me. And he was like, all right, well, yes, yes, I understand. So I went over to his house, and I had this moment where I get off the elevator on the top floor of this apartment building, overlooking the fucking Hudson. And I look out of the window on one side, and I can see the projects where I grew up. And I had to do that thing, like, and if you grew up here in New York, you know what I'm talking about, where I'm like, don't fall in love with the apartment. <laughs> and I was like, it's cool, because what if he's a jerk? And I'm like, look at that view. <laughs> Fucking penthouse apartment. <laughs> and he opens the door, and there he is, this like 60-year-old white guy with his like mid-length blonde hair and his glasses, and he's wearing like jeans and a t-shirt. I'm like, you couldn't get dressed up. <laughs> but it's cool. And he made me dinner. And wasn't that lovely? And we sat and we ate and we chatted, and he was asking me all sorts of questions about what it was like growing up in New York and we were chatting about this and that and the other thing, and of course the topic of like racism and how horrible white people are came up. <laughs> I like to get that out of the way if I'm thinking about fucking a white person. <laughs> I need to know that when I say, fuck the man, they are like, yes, fuck us all. <laughs> like, that's what I need. And I remember telling him briefly a story about, you know, when I was a kid and the first time I experienced racism as a little kid, you know, called me a nigger in the playground. And I look over at him and I'm not even shitting you, he's like crying. He's like, how could someone do that to a child? How could someone, and I'm like, now I'm kind of turned on because I'm like, oh. <laughs> he might like actually like, be kind of woke and that's kind of hot for me. So I'm like, okay, it's cool. It's cool, whatever. So we're chatting, we're not even through the first fucking course, which is some delightful sushi, and he comes around the table and like full on puts his hand down my blouse and is like <laughs> In a move I have come to discover is the wolf style. And I'm sitting there like, uh, okay fine, it's been a while since I've had any sex, let's just go ahead and do this. And we retire to the bedroom where he proceeds to eat the pussy like it was a pot of neck bones and he had not seen meat in a year. I am not even kidding you. And everyone's like, oh, that's so great. I'm like, yeah, until you are dehydrated. And you're like, I need some Gatorade, some fucking, some salt tablets, like I was literally like, I didn't even know what to do with myself. Like my leg was doing that thing where it's twitching. You know what I'm talking about too, where your leg's just like, na -na 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 -na. 
And I'm finally just like, after I shit you not, you can ask my friends four hours. I'm like, you need to get off. I literally have my foot on his shoulder. And he's like, you do not like anymore? And I'm like, I'd like more, but I'd also like to A, walk again, B, live, C, not collapse into a pile of brown dust. So we fool around, everything's amazing. He invites me back the next day. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Date number two, he says to me, I've been thinking about us having a master-slave relationship. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> he said, I have written up an outline for a contract. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, mister, like I've never actually had a master-slave relationship. Talking to me, the pervert, like the executive pervert, <laughs> who has traveled around the world doing this shit professionally, show me what you got. So he takes out this list and he starts saying, well, I would need you basically to be available to serve me at all times, so then it would be my responsibility to take care of you. I'm like, okay, he's like, I understand you do not have health care. I will take care of that for you. I understand that you might have financial needs. I will make sure that you have a savings account and that we put money away for you every month. I understand that you are involved in the sex community. I will need for you to find partners for us so that we may all have sex together. <laughs> My work takes me all over the world, so I would need for you to be available to travel anywhere at any time. might want to have sex with men too, so you have to be okay with that. And I'm like, <laughs> can we go back to the healthcare? <laughs> as crazy as this seems, pretty much within a week of this meeting, I have moved into his house. And he was traveling and he was like, here's the keys to my house. Did I mention it's a two bedroom fucking penthouse apartment? And every time I get off the elevator and I look back to the neighborhood where I grew up, the Johnson fucking projects, and the fucking doors open up to the elevator and I'm like, beans don't burn in the kitchen. <laughs> Took a whole lot of trying just to get up that hill. Now we're up in the big leagues, getting our time. told little black me 40 years ago that you were going to be happy with a collar around your neck that signifies your submission to someone, that you were going to be the most well taken care of by someone who sees you as the most precious and beautiful jewel that has ever walked the earth. If you had told me when I was rejected by people for being too fat, that I would be with someone who not only thought it was okay that I was fat, but who stared at my belly like dinner was on. <laughs> and could not get enough of my body as it is, I would have said, get the fuck out. <laughs> the thing is that it is so easy for us, freaks and perverts and weirdos, to feel like we will never find that other person. This guy, was 60 years old when we first met. And one of the things he always tells people is, don't wait until you are as old as I am to find your true calling and to be who you are. And I say, wait, if that's what it takes. <laughs> if that's what it takes for you to truly find the person who is for you, fucking do that shit. Because the appreciation and love that we have for each other is worth every 
minute of every year that we both spent waiting for each other. It's fucking magnificent, and we're both worth it. Sir, I love you so much. to add that I am Melina Lee Williams Haas on Facebook and really fucking seriously if you think it might be hot to fuck an old middle-aged pudgy couple <laughs> come and get some of this <laughs> he speaks German so naughty politically incorrect play is in play And I want to give a big shout out to all of the perverts who are here who share their stories today and everyone who's here showing their faces. And let me say especially a shout out to the perverts of color. Because I fucking see you and I know how it is to feel like everyone is telling you that like this is a white people thing. I'm like, get to deprive me of the good shit. Yes, it's freaky, and yes, it's fucked up, and yes, it is magically delicious. So get your freak on, brothers and sisters. Thank you.